everyone. Welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Zantanetti, and we're here just to share the Word of God this morning. It is so important for us to stay on target, and that's what this message is all about, staying on target. God has commissioned you to do something, but we must stay on target. That is such an important concept here. And we're going to be looking in Matthew chapter 28, and if you want to turn with me, you can. And we're looking at Matthew chapter 28, and we're going to start at verse 18, because this is where the Great Commission begins. And know that you're called to a Great Commission. And he says this, And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power, that word power is also authority, exousia, all power, authority, is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Notice in is a very important word because this is where he is. He is in heaven, not just at heaven, but he is in heaven and in the earth because he is also in the earth by the pouring out of his Holy Spirit. And go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And there is the last word, Amen. Now, the first thing I want to share with you about staying on target is that you're going to have great opposition when you launch forth to launch forth the gospel. The whole spectrum of the kingdom of God is that the gospel is being launched forth very much like we shoot missiles in the air. God has caused you and called you and purposed you to launch missiles of the gospel into the world because people need to hear about the message of salvation. And so here we know that the purpose of Jesus dying on the cross because of all the commotion of that he that he I guess um, inspired in people because of the words that he said, they were inspired by their evil to do him evil and by doing him evil, they were doing us good because Jesus said, that he must be handed over to sinful men and they will do whatever they want with him and they're going to crucify him. He says, but on the third day, he would rise again. Now think about the excitement of the resurrection. But notice this, in Hebrews chapter 12, it says that Jesus, for the joy that was set before him, endured the opposition of sinful men. So understand, just like Joseph's brother, that brothers who did him evil, when Joseph was on the throne, he became governor. He, after a while, he, um, he, he revealed himself to his brothers and they wept and he said, don't be afraid. Don't, I'm not going to do you harm, in other words. He says, what you meant for evil, God meant it for good. And so understand that when we look at the cross, this is God's meant for good, no matter what men did, how they beat him and how they crucified him, no matter what they did, meaning evil, this was meant for our good. And so we see that Jesus stood on target when he took the cross on to go to Calvary. He took the cross knowing for the joy that was set before him, that is the resurrection and the calling of his children. What a wonderful, wonderful gospel this is. And then he says that all power has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. I want to let you know something that this phrase here is the whole concept of our position in Christ with him because we are seated in heaven with him. Watch this now. And we are agents we are agents of the gospel here upon the earth through him. Oh, man, I tell you, what a great thing to know that we are agents 
agents of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Will you call yourself an agent of Jesus Christ? But we are also operators of the gospel. You have many different operators in this world, operators of machines, operators of planes, operators of elevators. But whatever you, whatever you do, know this, that you are an operator of the gospel of Jesus Christ by the operation of God by putting Jesus Christ on the cross. And the Bible tells us that Jesus dis disarmed all principalities. He disarmed them. He took them out of the way so that we can freely preach the gospel. No matter what condition it is, we are free to preach the gospel. And that's why we can stay on target. I remember that movie, if I may use the illustration of Star Wars. I think it was the first one that came out. And... They had to, the firefighters had to go into this little tight space and fly and shoot just one little missile into this little, this little hole in a pipe in order to destroy the base station, a gigantic base station. So imagine something to, to maybe to destroy like the size of the moon by shooting one little missile into a little hole. And that was the target. And they went into that little place and you could see the ships flying and, and the enemies coming in, destroying them. But there were two that were before Luke, the one that saved the whole mission. But those two were pivotal because there was one that said, I can't make it. It's, 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 it's hard, in other words. And there was one guy saying, stay on target. And he says, but they're going to come and get me. He says, stay on target. And the enemy came in and they got him. But the other one who says stayed on target, he stood on target also and he was able to make way for Luke to shoot that one missile to destroy the enemy. You are that, you are that, um, that person that God has called to go into the world, in your spaceship, hallelujah, if I may say it that way, to shoot the gospel into the holes of those hearts that are empty and to bring salvation, the message of salvation, so that Jesus can do a work. Now, Understand that this commission by Jesus Christ saying all authority has been given unto me. Remember that in the book of Acts chapter 2, we see the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon about 120 people in that upper room. And God made sure that was there were at least 120, if not more, in that upper room praying and waiting for the manifestation of the power of God. And as they were praying and waiting, God sent down the Holy Spirit like fire and it entered into their bodies. It went through their souls. It went into their spirit. And that's where the Spirit of God abides. And they came out of that place and they were filled and they spoke in tongues. And people said, these people are drunk. They're crazy. But hallelujah, God had a vessel God had a vessel that was prepared to stand up, and Peter stood up. Peter stood up. Hallelujah. Thank God for Peter's that stand up. And he said, gentlemen, people, I assure you these people are not drunk. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. In other words, you were not legal as a Jew to drink at 9 o'clock in the morning. He says, we're not drunk. He says, but this is that. I want to let you know this is that that helps you to stay on target. This is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel, that in the last days God was going to pour out his Holy Spirit upon all flesh. And he says, they're going to prophesy. And folks, God has called you to be prophets of the gospel. He has sent you forth to prophesy the gospel, prophesy the message. You are proclaimers of the truth, operators of the gospel. You are you are, uh, you are what they call um, sweared in, as a sworn in agents. Yeah, you're a sworn in agent. When you lifted up your heart to the Lord and you said, I give you my allegiance. I give you the promise that I will stay faithful. I will stay on target. He said, go ye. Let me tell you something about the word go. Go is a very powerful word. Do not mistake it. Do not take it light. Go has a meaning and go is the purpose of, of what God has called you to do, okay? So go means to depart, to walk. It means to go on the journey. 
It means to go forth. So understand that God has called you to depart from where you are and go away on a journey to see other people, to do the will of God. Because this is what it's all about. God has called you to go forth with the gospel of Jesus Christ and preach the message of the gospel. Now, this is also interesting. He said, go. That's the purpose. That is the power. That is what pushes you forth, launches you forth so that you can preach this gospel. And the concept is to teach all the nations. Now, folks, they were not going to reach all the nations of the world in one day and even in their lifetime. So that means that God commissioned them with the purpose of also commissioning you and I. And that's why like Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, it says that being confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will complete it. You don't have to worry about the mission being completed. Give yourself to God totally and watch what he will do with you. He will complete it unto the day of Jesus Christ. We're not just doing this in vain. We're waiting for the coming of the one that commissioned us into the field to preach the gospel. And I love it that he told the disciples to meet them, meet, excuse me, meet him in Galilee. Now, folks, it was not just the 12 disciples. Remember that, that the apostle Paul said that, that at one time, 500 people saw Jesus. At one time, 500 witnesses saw Jesus, and many scholars and all the commentaries that are the best commentaries, and all those who teach on this verse will tell you that this was a mountain where they met in Galilee, and that the 500 people were there also with the 12 disciples. How do we know this? Well, listen to what it says. It says that when they saw Jesus, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Now, understand this. It was not the 12 disciples that doubted, or 11 disciples. Remember, Judas, Judas, let me correct that. Judas had hung himself. The 11 disciples that were there with Jesus already had witnessed his resurrection, already had eaten with him, already had spoken with him. There was no doubt that he was alive and that the commission was real. But the 500 were there, were not, and the word doubt is not doubting his resurrection. He was before them. But they did not understand the process of the kingdom and what God was calling them to do. And so watch this now. God tells them to go into the world and to teach. And even though some doubt it, they still worship. They still worship. They knew that something marvelous was happening here. And he says, go into all the world and teach. This is the whole concept to bring instruction. The word teach is about doctrine. To teach the doctrine where? To all the nations. See, when we teach the doctrine of Jesus Christ, who he is, his person, that he's God, that he's Lord, that he's king, that he's the servant, that he's the shepherd. When you bring all of these doctrines and the things that he taught the people of the day, God's spirit will move upon them and awaken them. See, you and I are not called to make believers. God makes believers, but we are called by all grace to teach and make disciples. But watch this. Then comes the identification. This is why we need to stay on target. We just don't go. We just don't teach. But we are to baptize them into the identification of the person of God, the, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus, the name of the Father. I am that I am in the name of the Son, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Adonai, and of the Spirit, Ruach, the Spirit of God, who is God himself. Hallelujah to that. I'm telling you, you get excited when you think about what God has sent us to do. And then he says, don't just teach them anything. Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. In other words, the three years that you spent with me, I gave you the gospel. I gave you the instruction. And this is what I want you to take into the world. Teach them. Give them the instruction. Help them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And then he says, don't be afraid because I am with you. Lo, lo, I am with you. 
Someone said that, that um, it was a joke. They said that I don't have to get on an airplane to go preach the gospel, I guess in other words, because lo, he is with me. That's just a joke. But it means I am with you for sure to the end of the world. Folks, I do not want to die without going into heaven knowing that my left hand and my right hand is not empty, but is filled with the works of God. Hallelujah. God told Joshua, Though you, are, though you are old, mature, yet there is much land to be possessed. There was much land to be possessed. And I'm telling you today, by the commission of God's grace in your life, there is much to do. There is much to say. There is many places to go. There is no time to fiddle around. Someone says, hey, how you doing? He says, oh, I'm just wasting, you know, I'm just, uh, excuse me, I'm just uh, killing a little time. And he said, you're not killing time. Time is killing you. There is no, listen, there is no time to just sit around and do nothing. Every time you sit and you have time, open the word of God. Call somebody, do something that's going to bring happiness or joy or encouragement or lifting up the name of Jesus in somehow, some way. Do you, do you know that the Jews, they don't rest except on, on the Sabbath? During the week, there is no time to spend on foolishness. Those who are committed to the word of God and to the Torah, they are constantly, constantly doing something to advance the kingdom. That's why, although they, I'm sure, listen, every community has their weaknesses and no one is perfect. We know that, right? But, but, the communities are strong. And folks, let me tell you something about the church before I get off right now. The, the church of Jesus Christ is not weak. The church of Jesus Christ is not disoriented. Oh, we have our problems and we go through our times of affliction. But man, you mess with us, we will come together and we will pray. The best thing that you could do is go ahead and, and, and uh, afflict us. Go ahead and persecute us. Don't you know that you're going to drive us to our knees? Don't you know that you're going to drive us to the purpose of prayer? And through prayer, God is going to move. You want to mess with the Christian church? Just look at the history of God and the Christian church. Look at the Israel, look at the, the people of Israel. Look at his kingdom. You cannot snuff it out. Let people know that. You can do whatever you want. You cannot destroy the kingdom. It is God's power and glory forever and ever. Listen, stay on target. Whatever you do, don't move from the purpose of Jesus Christ. Go into all the world and preach with all authority given to you from heaven to manifest it upon the earth. Go as his disciples to all the nations, baptizing, teaching, and know that the importance of the kingdom is Jesus Christ. He exists today. He is living. He is seated on the throne. And you cannot, they cannot dethrone him. Hallelujah. Don't fear. God is with you as you go forth to launch the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is him that works in you both to will and to do according to his good purpose. God bless you and have a spirit-filled, on-target day.